Since you bring this up, you know, you were um, ambassador to Romania and to Italy. What, how have those two countries fared with respect to China's Belt and Road investments? Well, uh, Romania is still safe, but uh, Italy and Greece uh, are, uh, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say in Chinese grip, but uh, China has quite quite a hold over Greece in terms of most of its ports. China has a lot of hold in terms of uh, Italian, some of the Italian industries, especially small and medium. Uh, if, for example, you must have heard of the Murano island near Venice, if you go to Murano, the shopkeepers there will tell you that we don't produce any bit of Murano glass. Everything is manufactured in China. Uh, if you go to Prato, which used to be the textile town of Italy, uh, and that is where uh, COVID spread uh, from the Chinese colony there into Europe. Uh, if you go to Prato, you find entire streets and shopping uh, areas full of uh, Chinese nationals. They take one uh, shop and then overnight, I mean, over the course of the next few months and years, you find the entire street has been emptied out of Italians and Chinese are overtaken. So China has not a hold over the government of Italy or uh, the government of Romania, but in Italy certainly it has a presence and it is a visible presence. The second thing, to answer your question in a, uh, another way and another example, is that some countries in Europe, members of EU like Hungary, will not allow any anti-China uh, bill to be passed in the European Parliament or by European Union. Uh, so China's hold over some countries in Europe, uh, especially some of the former East European countries who are members of EU now, is remarkable. And uh, it is affecting the policies of those countries. Well, I'm glad you brought up uh, some of the, the the economic leverage China uses around the world, because you've also said that uh, you know China isn't just using military action against India on the border. What are some of the uh, non-military strategies China is using uh, to compete with India? China has been very selective in its approach, and it picks one sector, concentrates on it, ensures that that sector is virtually decimated in terms of local production. Uh, to give you an example, it started in a very small way by capturing the toy manufacturing market of India. And in a period of a uh, couple of years, we found that all the toys uh, are being um, uh, exported by China into India. And Indian toy industry had been virtually reduced to nothing. To give you another extreme example, the religious gods, the icons of the Hindu gods, were traditionally made in India for centuries, for thousands of years. Suddenly we found that uh, come a religious festival and at the back of the icon was written made in China. So China went about in a very systematic way and then it went into bigger areas. So as uh, not to be noticed that it is aiming for something specific. The first area was the power sector of India. Suddenly we found that all our major industries had been wiped out because Chinese pricing was much better. Uh, it was much better because the state was sponsoring those industries in China. State was subsidizing them so that they could outprice the Indian counterparts. And Except for one major state sector industry in India, we found that the rest were out of competition. So power sector, which was being supplied by, you know, less than uh, perfect uh, equipment from China, uh, suddenly became uh, beholden to China. Then they went on to the telecommunication sector. Now, both power and telecommunication sector are strategic sectors for any country. We found ourselves in a position where we were really uh, dependent on China in these two sectors. Now, of course, corrective measures are being taken, but this is after uh, some damage had been done and some serious concern uh, was there for people to see. Uh, 
the other thing is that uh, it is not just india which is being affected by 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 chinese uh, uh, practices look at the world itself i mean who made china the superpower that it is become it was nixon and kissinger combined when they went there in 1972 i mean first kissinger went and then kissinger and nixon they decided that soviet union had to be uh, countered via china which was a wrong policy and then america kept on helping china the second big stage was in the year 2001 when the world decided that china can become the member of wto at that time the chinese economy was of 1 trillion dollars within 20 years by 2020 it had become 15 trillion dollar economy largely experts say because of its admission into wto and it could then take advantage of the democratic world and its free trade practices so we the people of the world are equally responsible in making china the monster it has become that's true that's definitely true i don't know i think america should get a, an you know extra credit for that yeah. <laughs> we really we really did a lot well for yeah china. i mean if it weren't for like the american tech sector just going head over heels for china well and the financial sector well but so, I'm, i'm going somewhere specific with this like then like if they hadn't if the tech sector hadn't gone there huawei wouldn't have been become what it is and then china wouldn't be taking over the telecommunications industry of like india or all over africa like if if it weren't for that we wouldn't have given we gave china the tools it needs to subvert countries around the world without military force oh like how cisco went into china in like the 90s and then built the firewall built the firewall and then china took that technology and you know reused it with their own homegrown companies yeah Yeah, sorry about that by the way. No, no, no. What surprises me, I'm I'm glad you mentioned this because it triggered a reaction. You know, if you if you look back in uh, time and go back to 50s and 60s, there was a Soviet phobia. There there was a fear of communism in America and there's some amount of witch hunt also, but at least it saved America, Americans and the democratic world. from being overtaken let's say by the uh, iron curtain or the communist world i find it strange that china is pinching you in america and uh, other parts of the world and yet no one complains if china says disney shall not produce a picture which depicts china in the wrong way disney says yes sir we will not do that if china tells a basketball star you are not allowed to enter china because you said something against china the basketball star immediately apologizes why is america i mean by america i mean the democratic world also it's not just america so sort of uh, equivalent to chinese perfidy in terms of the stealing of technology that you mentioned i have not heard of any punitive action by america against a major chinese company because it has stolen your rocket technology or missile technology or uh, uh, you know uh, submarine technology or the latest fi- fighter technology the same thing is duplicated elsewhere australia is doing the same australian politics are being uh, influenced by china in a most uh, amazing way and yet Australia feels that China is its uh, special friend. So why is it that there was one standard for Soviet Union, uh, which had done, you know, nothing in comparison, which was uh, uh, negative to the democratic world, uh, and China gets away virtually with murder. I think it's a great question because, like in the '40s and '50s, Americans wouldn't see a movie if one of the actors was a communist, to the extent that Hollywood studios were blacklisting people because they knew they couldn't make money if there was a communist in their films. And today, you have Hollywood studios 
desperately trying to get a Chinese communist company to to finance their movies. Well, I mean, I think there's two things. One is that China has a lot more money than the Soviet Union ever did. That That's a big mistake that the Soviet Union made is essentially wrecking their economy with communism. Uh-huh. Uh, and the second thing is that I don't think we have this awareness that there is this kind of Cold War going on between China and the rest of the well, world. Well, you're saying yeah. there's a Cold War. Don't you have a Cold War mentality, yeah, yeah, Shelley? exactly. Well, I don't even think that um, that works maybe for the Chinese foreign ministry to accuse U.S. politicians of, but I don't even think that a lot of, you know, kind of ordinary people would even know about that Cold War mentality thing, or they're just, just not aware. Yeah, if There's, you said yeah. that, like, communists are funding movies in America today, I, I don't think people would be like, wait, what? That's happening? Yeah, and I think there's the third thing, maybe, is that people don't think that China is communist anymore. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, you're right there. Uh, but let me add to what you said. Uh, again, in form of a question, in form of thinking aloud, the Gulf countries had huge amounts of money. When the oil boom started in the 70s, they didn't know what to do with the money. I mean, they were drowning in tons of dollars that they got. But they did not influence American policies or Western policies or democratic world's policies in the way China has done. You could still have movies which made, uh, you know, uh, uh, critical comments, let's say, about Saudi Arabia or Dubai or whatever, uh, and get away with it. Uh, The other question is, China, it's not a one-way traffic that China prints dollars and gives it to some Americans. No. China gains much more by exporting to America. China gains much more because of American or free world's investments in uh, China. China gains a lot by Taiwanese investments in uh, China. There are 100,000 Taiwanese companies and uh, individuals who are right now positioned there in China. So the China's stakes in having a normal relationship with the rest of the world is almost as much, if not greater, than the rest of the world's stake in China. But the big difference is that China uses its stick selectively. China chooses its victims, then gets after them. And no one stands by those victims. The second thing is that Iron uh, Curtain countries were, of course, uh, behind the Iron Curtain, so people didn't know much about them. But still, the world had some idea about them. In China, China's case, we have a total blank slate. We know very little about what is happening inside China. We know very little about their strategic plans. We are guessing. To give you another example, U.S. Department of Defense publishes every year a report on China and its intentions. Uh, On most uh, previous occasions, the focus was on Taiwan, besides other things. But India and its Uh, Ladakh uh, and line of actual control was not mentioned at all till 2021 and that too in passing. So can you imagine how little we know about China? How little the democratic world knows about China? And that is one of the reasons why we do not have an effective counter when it strikes let's say Disney or McDonald's or whatever or some basketball star, uh, because we we, we are found looking, uh, you know, askings as to why did it happen. By the time we find an uh, answer or approximate answer, the effect is already there. The fellow has apologized. 